Please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. A fun characteristic all cults share is that they resist that label, cult. Even now, 15 years since the cult fell apart, my parents will still give me a list of reasons why the group that they started in the early 70s was not a cult. So fine. It wasn't a cult. What it was was a non-denominational, evangelical, fundamentalist, religious fringe group, um, <laughs> the members of which did not really integrate into society. <laughs> but it wasn't a cult, you guys, because we had mainstream religious beliefs like God is all-powerful, God is all-knowing, and women can't wear nail polish. <laughs> the leader of the not cult was my grandfather, George Giptakis, and he could do whatever he wanted. He decided who married who, he had control of the money, he decided where people lived. We lived in Calif uh, Fullerton, California. We didn't have a television, we couldn't listen to secular music. We could listen to select Christian artists not Amy Grant, she was far too female and independent. <laughs> Christian music was fine, and Rush Limbaugh was always a good option. But it wasn't a cult, you guys, because women could go to the beach just like anybody, as long as we were fully clothed. Because, in case you didn't know, if there's one thing that throws a wrench in the will of God, it's a woman in a one-piece. <laughs> When I was five years old, my mom was trying to get this hairdresser to join our group, and so she sent me to get a haircut. I told the hairdresser that my secret hero was Mary Lou Retton, the gymnast. She cut my hair just like hers, and I was in heaven. My parents were appalled. Short hair was God's plan for men. At five years old, I had already transgressed against Almighty God, and his plan for my life. Um, <laughs> but there was, in my life, times when the real world did shine through. My big break came when I was 11 years old. My parents were going to an all-day elders and their wives' church meeting, and my sister and I were going to be at home alone, cleaning the house. My job was to take all their books from their bookcase, take them out, dust the shelves, put all the books back. This was the day I discovered that my dad had a secret. I took all his Bibles from his lower shelf, and as I was dusting the shelf, I felt something pushed way back under the bookcase out of view. I pulled it out, and I opened up this oddly shaped box Inside was Bob Dylan's complete collection <laughs> of vinyl records. This was a total no-no, okay? Except for maybe his three-year Jesus period, this music <laughs> was totally off limits. You see, before my dad found Jesus, he was a surfer hippie with a pretty, pretty great taste in music. And he had given it all up for Christ, everything except for Bob Dylan, <laughs> whose music he kept hidden from view, a secret that he couldn't enjoy listening to, but he also could not bear to throw it away. And so I started from the beginning. I put that first record in, and I sat down, and I started listening to this amazing, revolutionary music that I'd never heard before. I started from the beginning, and I listened to everything, and then I started over. I forgot about my chores, and about the cult, and about getting in trouble. I forgot about all the rules. I was totally swept away. I heard Lay Lady Lay, and Maggie's Farm, and the times they are changing. And then it was night, and my parents burst into their bedroom, like, what is going on? What, where is this music coming from? My dad looked so guilty. <laughs> it was the best 
thing ever. I was in the middle of all of his records and there were these photographs of Dylan and, and this catalog of lyrics. I did not get in trouble that night. And shortly after that, my parents decided to let my sister and I listen to a very select group of secular musicians. It was our first taste of the real world, a world that wasn't quite as demonic as we had been taught. When I was 23 years old, I left the cult. It was the hardest decision I ever made and also the biggest break of my life. Thank you. I will always be thankful for the day that I found my dad's secret stash of music because it helped me see who my dad might have been before the, before the cult. But most of all, it was the day that I started my own personal revolution. Thank you so much.